Hey guys, welcome to Fashion Friday. It's a little different this week. Uh, it's actually Tuesday. It is Tuesday. It's Tuesday here in Nashville. It's Tuesday everywhere. And I just did a post on Instagram in this top. So if you see this top again, I'm not repeating an outfit. It's the same day. And I had one of you guys write to me in my DMs. You slid into my DMs. Uh, asking me about how do I stay body positive on a regular basis. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that because we're about to be bombarded with summer body ready and all those things. We're going to be dealing with like Instagram. Instagram threw so much crap at me today, you guys. It threw skinny tea and waist trainers and like get your body beach ready and all this crap. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how to navigate the headspace that you need to be in when that's happening. A little bit of my story if you don't know enough about it already and go from there. I'm going to try and condense my story as much as possible. I used to be 200 pounds. I was a size 16. I was a plus size model. I got really fed up with it. Uh, went vegan. Dropped a bunch of weight. Got down to 145. Loved it. Was so happy. Decided that I wanted to kind of spread my wings and sow my oats. Discovered vodka. Really is great for social anxiety. Gained 20 pounds of it back. Got depressed. Quit drinking down to 120 something. I don't weigh myself anymore. I don't weigh myself, I don't count calories, I don't do any of that stuff. Anyway, when you put your body through that kind of, it, what's the word? Uh, stress, torture, when you're mean to your body, your body does not end up looking like a Victoria's Secret model. I'm sure that I could if I had unlimited time and resources to do that, but I don't, and I don't really want to. So here's kind of how I deal with this stuff on a regular basis because as someone that used to struggle with eating, it still affects me in a way I just have learned to kind of curve that stuff. So here are my tips for staying body positive during the summertime when you're being bombarded with Instagram models and bikinis, with get swimsuit ready, with beach body, with all this absolute garbage. First things first. When I was dealing with all of my stuff and I didn't want to look at my body, because I thought if I lose weight, I'm going to have a great body. Well, the thing is, I've lost weight. I had a decent body. I'm covered in stretch marks. One, because I grew like a foot when I was like 10 or 11. So I've been this height for a while. So I'm covered in stretch marks all up my sides, all in, the, like, in my thighs. My arms have them. And then losing and gaining weight, your boobs are going to be like, what are we doing here? So if they're faint, you can't really see them. But I have posted about them on Instagram before because I want you guys to know that this is normal. So I'm covering stretch marks. I have half an ab. It's real cute. But I can't seem to get the other ones to come in, which is fine. My butt, it's got dimples on it. It's from gaining and losing. It's also hereditary. I've done everything in the world that I can to get rid of it. The only person that really sees it is my husband, so that's fine. He's fine with it. But I want to talk to you guys about how I learned to deal with it because I was under the impression if I lose weight, I will have a good body. The truth is I lost weight, I have a decent body, and I'm happy with it, and here's why. First thing that I did, and you guys can choose to do this or not, but I really recommend it, I got naked. Not in like a fun way. Well, it was kind of fun, but not in a fun, fun way. You know what I mean. So I got naked all the time on a regular basis. And my thinking behind this was, do you know when you say a word over and over and over again until it loses its meaning? Like sit here and say paperclip, 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 paperclip. It just sounds like, no, like nonsense. I thought that by looking at my naked body on a regular basis, it would have the same effect. And it did. I also look at naked people for a living. Well, I dress people for a living. So I'm looking at people in various states of undress and I'm seeing all kinds of bodies. I'm seeing rolls, I'm seeing lumps, I'm seeing abs, I'm seeing spray tans, I see bad tattoos, I see all this stuff. So when you see other people that are not perfect on a regular basis, it really makes you begin to kind of accept your own. I have what they call body dysmorphia disorder. Most women have it. It's this thing where basically like I look in the mirror and I still see myself as 200 pound Peyton sometimes. And it's really difficult. So like for me, jean shopping, I went shopping yesterday, so Monday. I still subconsciously, almost seven years later, go for the size 16s because in my head I've kind of thought that I'm a size 16. I'm not, I know in my conscious mind, but my subconscious mind still kind of goes that way. So I, 
took during my weight loss period when I was losing and gaining, I took photos of myself naked. You don't have to have someone else do them for you. Um, there are maybe three photographers that have ever shot me topless even, and they're all ones that I love and trust, but I'm talking like full on naked photos, front, back, side, all angles, all this stuff. Because for me, when I see a photograph of myself and I'm not posed, there's a difference. I know how to pose for a photo. It makes me go, oh, so that's what I look like. In, a, in the same way that I write about in the book, the first time I actually saw a photo of myself, Instead of the mirror, I was like, oh, she's kind of cute. As opposed to, what a mutant. What a terrible gremlin. Uh, so photos for me really help see what is there. And it was in every kind of lighting. It was unposed um, underwear at first. And then I was like, I need to see what the rest of this looks like. So I did it. I don't think I have those photos anymore. I know I deleted a lot of them at one point when I was going through this. But the point is, it's kind of like you have to stare at this over and over again until it loses its meaning. I'm not saying your body doesn't mean anything, but you know what I mean. So the other thing is this. I've tried to do, I do this thing called the Deflect and Appreciate. I write about it in the book. It's kind of a formula I created based on several other psychologists that I love, study, follow. And it's basically just flipping the narrative. That's all it is. The deflect and appreciate just sounded more fun. So for me, like I wrote about in my post today, like I could be mad that my boobs are not what they used to be. I used to have like a 36D. They used to be like the first thing that people noticed, which was also kind of really irritating. But it worked because if you push your boobs up, people don't look at your gut. So I thought. It's not true. But I used to have really great boobs. So when I lost weight... Of course, this went away. It went from like a 36D to I'm a small C at this point. But you wouldn't be able to tell because I feel like I'm a giant and they just look like, you know, two, two socks with softballs on them. Um, so I started wear I started going without a bra, you guys. Like, for multiple reasons. I still don't like wearing them. They're not comfortable. They don't fit my aesthetic. But being able to feel them move was kind of amazing and in a weird way made me feel really empowered and strong just being able to feel them there as opposed to strapping them up where I thought they needed to be. So most of the time I don't wear one because I don't need to anymore. Um, another thing that I really have learned to embrace, my I posted about this um, right after Easter. I have another family member of mine who has been diagnosed with breast cancer, which means I now have it on both sides of my family and to the medical profession I'm a ticking, ticking time bomb. So any moment that I have with these guys, with Laverne and Shirley, is just amazing because they're healthy, I keep an eye on them, there's, there are no lumps, there's no bumps, I don't have to go and sit in a doctor's office, like they're so great, they're perfect because they're not sick. Um, the stretch marks, I'm tall, I like being a tall woman, it's part of my thing at this point. If I had to get the tiger stripes to go through with it, whatever. I have this thing that really used to drive me crazy. I'm really short torsoed and I have what some of the women in my family call ledges where my hips just kind of jut out for no reason. And it's not really noticeable until I point it out, but I've always been self-conscious about it. And the other day I went to pick up Bo, which if you guys watch my videos, you know that she's always out of the camera doing this right now, uh, being a troublemaker. Come here, come here Bo Diddley, say hi. So we wait for her dad to come home when he comes home, we sit in the sun, in the front room in the sunroom, and she perches on my hip. Right? <gasps> Doing you. If I didn't have that little ledge, where is she going to perch? My body was made for Bobo. I'm sure it was made for human babies, but you know what I mean. But because I have that one little weird quirk on my body, she's got a place to sit while we do something that's important to us every single day. And that's wait on Daddy to come home. So these things that I used to hate about myself, I've turned into things that can be seen as good. I also ask myself, who would I be without this thought? Who would I be without the thought that my hips are too wide? I probably have a lot more time on my hands to write, to dedicate to my business, to dedicate to cleaning my kitchen, which is what I'm putting off right now, to work out, to do all this stuff. It's just so much easier if I didn't. It would be so much easier if I didn't have that thought. The last thing is exercise, not as punishment, but because you can. So this morning, I got up and I walked two miles because I can. It was beautiful out, right? Put on some good music. Uh, I think my playlist today, I'm trying to think, it was a while ago. Listen to the faces. 
I listened to Albert King, not Freddie or BB. Listened to a little bit of Dolly Parton. She was on my mind this morning. And a little bit of um, 90s throwback because it was, I was just in a mood. But that was time I spent by myself moving my body, moving all of my body parts because most people that I know right now don't have the privilege to do that. Got some vitamin D, hung out, worked out, and then that set up the rest of my choices for the rest of the day. Because in a way, like walking two miles, being in a good mood, I'm not going to go turn around and ruin that by binging like I used to. It's easier to binge when you're laying in bed all day long, when you're being lazy, when you're not being productive. So I drank my water. I ate healthy today. Like I got out and did stuff. I was productive because I set up my day. So if you are a morning person, which I've slowly become this last couple of years, I think it's this one waking me up at six o'clock every morning. Um, I've become a morning person, so I use that time to exercise, be it yoga, stretching, walking, whatever it is. Whatever makes you feel good, do it. I also have an afternoon dance party in my house every day. Well, we do. So whatever it takes to get you moving, because you can. Don't look at it as a punishment. Don't look at it as an end goal. Look at it as I am alive. I get to do this. I'm so excited. I also walk with our neighbor Gary. And we're like the little gossipy old ladies in the neighborhood. And we just speed walk and get caught up. And it's fun. It's not torture. So whatever it takes for you guys to be able to get through the bikini season, beach body season, whatever it is, I want you guys to think about this. I want you to think about who would you be without the nasty thoughts about your body. Can you do something about that? That's another part of the deflect and appreciate I forgot to mention. If there's something about you that you do not like, can you change it? If the answer is no, then you need to learn how to accept it. I can't change my hips unless I go get all of my bones broken and put back together. That's just stupid. So I will accept them. If I'm 15 pounds heavier than I want to be and I don't want to accept it, then I can do something about it. But take responsibility if you can do something about it. There's no excuse. Long story short, walk around naked, eat your vegetables, drink your water, work out. That's how you survive beach body season. I hope this was helpful, you guys. I will talk to you next week. I love you so much. You wear it well. Bye. And see you. Yay.